Welcome back to Buddha Bites. I'm Iris Fairfax. This is episode 14. I can't believe we've already done 14 of these. Well, uh, I would like to share a little story about what happened with my sister and me a couple of weeks ago. It was a Sunday and we were hungry. And my sister had heard about a new creperie uh, in her neighborhood. And so we thought, well, that's perfect. We love crepes. And so we went over there and it was a really, really nice proprietor. And we were so excited to eat these creations of hers. And we got home and we were disappointed. Now, I've been making crepes since I was a teenager. And in advance, I'm gonna tell you, I might go back and forth between calling them crepes and crepes. Prepare for that. Anyway, I learned how to make crepes from good old Betty Crocker. And it's a very basic recipe um, that is perfectly fine. It's, it's, a, it's really simple to make crepes. Uh, it's just a few ingredients like I practically always say to you. And it's extremely versatile. You can make crepes really for a breakfast, lunch, brunch, snacks, dinner, savory, sweet, you can, you can have a party and make a crepe bar. In fact, I'm standing up because there's a crepe bar already set up that I'm gonna show you later. But the first thing we need to do is to learn the technique of how to make crepes. So let's go into the kitchen and do that right now. So we are going to do the standard crepe recipe. Super, super easy. I like the Betty Crocker one, but I discovered one that was um, that was that I saw on television, there is a pastry chef named Zoe Francois. And I liked her recipe because it omitted one item and also it had a bigger capacity. So I went with Zoe. Uh, so the first thing you do is you start out with some eggs. And uh, while, I, while I break these, I wanna let you know that the Happy Egg Company has both heritage eggs and uh, free range. These that I'm breaking right now are the heritage eggs. That's the way that they've been coming out lately. And this one is the free range egg. The heritage eggs cost $2 more right now. And I just happened to notice that the free range, although it is a rich looking egg, is coming out a little bit lighter. No big deal, it's just nature. But these are both happy eggs, so I just wanted to show you. So you take your eggs and you break them up a little bit. And while I'm doing this, I do want to clarify. The lovely proprietor at the crepe place in my sister's neighborhood was at a disadvantage. She had a really, really tiny place and no place to sit. And because of the nature of crepes, you really want to be able to eat them as soon as you possibly can. And we couldn't do that just because of the setup of her place. So um, that's why I'm loving the fact that I can do it at home. So three eggs and a cup and a half of milk. Uh, I am using whole milk for my recipes. I try to use whole milk. At some point I'll probably experiment with lower fat milk or or even nut milks but at this point I especially since this is such a thin pancake really that's what it is I want to stick with the whole milk and I'll play around some other time now you will see that I did not automatically put in all of the milk the reason for that is that I am adding a cup and a half of all-purpose flour and although this is a very forgiving recipe, um, if you look at this gorgeous, I, I always say look at this gorgeous color. This is just gorgeous. This is why you buy these eggs. This is why I buy the eggs. This is why I recommend them. Um, starting with not all of the milk gives me a better opportunity to get all of the lumps out early on. Having said that, once this batter sits, the, um, the lumps will kind of come out on their own, but I just figure every opportunity that you have 
to minimize the amount of lumps in your batter, take the opportunity. It's just a technique thing. Now this is two tablespoons of unsalted butter. And I usually end up going in with my greatest tool, my hands. Super, super easy. And now I'm gonna put in the rest of my milk. Um, and while I mix this, and you wanna start small or else you'll just have batter all over the place for no good reason. So you wanna start with small motions and as it becomes more incorporated, then you can get a little bit bigger with what you're doing. So from here, I have added all of the milk I'll tell you about this in a second. And for savory and sweet, one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of kosher salt. That is where Zoe's recipe ends. Um, this is such a tiny amount of sugar and salt that this one batter is equally useful for sweet and savory applications. So this will need to sit for a little bit, but not before I add vanilla. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of vanilla. You'll barely taste it, but it lifts the flavor a little bit. Now remember what I said before, and I slightly misspoke. Pure vanilla extract, pure vanilla extract not imitation. Imitation is nasty chemicals. Don't make me cry. Use the pure stuff. Now, Zoe didn't use this, but again, I really, really like the way that vanilla boosts the flavor of a batter. I mean, otherwise, it's really just, you know, flour and a little bit of butter, tiny little bit of salt and sugar, and so the vanilla will add something that you can't quite tell what it is, but you'll know that it's especially delicious. Now, the reason why I have this extra little bit of milk is that if you find that the consistency isn't what you want it to be, you can always add a little bit of milk, so you wanna leave this on hand. So far, I like this consistency. Now, I'm gonna stop for a moment and talk to you about uh, specialty kitchen gadgets. There are a couple that I have already used that I really, really like. I love this OXO measuring cup uh, set. It's a set of three that I got. And the reason why I love it is that you can pour either looking at it from the side or the top. That is very useful. And I will tell you, I'll give you another tip really when you are measuring liquids, you wanna use a measuring cup like this. You don't want to use a measuring cup like this. This is for dry ingredients. You don't get an accurate measurement if you use the wrong tool for the, for the job that you're doing. So liquid and dry. Now I'm gonna tell you something else about a little gadget that I love. When I told you that I was putting in a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, I only used one cup. That is because when I worked at the high-end kitchen supply store that I adored and used my fantastic discount, this was one of the things that I got immediately. This is an odd size measuring cup set. So this it's a set of three. It's a one and a half cup and also a three-quarter cup and this is a two-third cup. Um, you may think that this is frivolous. It's really not because you can save a lot of time if you only need to scoop into your ingredient once. So I highly recommend when you get an opportunity and you have a couple extra bucks to spend, get some odd size measuring cups. So that said, this batter that I just made is going to need to sit for at least 30 minutes to a half an hour. Uh, but me being me, I went ahead and prepped some in advance. Now another thing that I did 
was I let my crepe pan get a little too hot, but that is okay. This is an opportunity for me to show you the standard crepe pan. And while it cools down a little bit, we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Rock. He, he, there, there's my brother-in-law laughing. So this is a standard French crepe pan. As you'll see, it's rather simple. It's also sort of light. It is steel. It's really not a high-end product, but this is what the French people who created crepes use for their own. And this didn't cost a lot. I want to say that long ago when I bought it, it might have cost like $15. You can use a regular, <laughs> I'm killing time to let this cool down a little bit, but, um, but this is all good information. You can use a regular um, eight inch skillet, six inch skillet, but I like the shape of this. The shape of this is the perfect size for crepes and it's also it gives you the perfect slope in the pan for what it is that you're trying to do it also is the right gauge of metal so that you know once you get the technique down how long it's going to take you to make your crepe now this is also a pretty well seasoned pan that is to say that i've used it a lot and it has a nice amount of sort of non-stickness to it. Uh, that's something that comes with time. Um, but uh, in the meantime, even with a well-seasoned pan, you want to start out with a little bit of butter. So you'll take this tiny little bit of butter and then you will immediately wipe out the excess. Now you can't do this and be afraid of a little bit of heat, but you wanna be wise about it. Just make sure that you have enough paper towel that you're not in danger of hurting yourself. So this is the crepe batter that I already made before you got here. It is a thin consistency, and now remember that a crepe is basically a thin pancake. This almost looks to the untrained eye, too thin, but it's actually perfect for what I'm doing. Now you're gonna to want to get at least about a quarter of a cup in your ladle. Now I'm used to this, and I also made a bunch of them last night, so I kinda of know um, how much I'm gonna need. You take your crepe pan, and you immediately pour in, err on the side of too little and just let it coat the bottom of the pan. Now, some people say that the first one is always unacceptable. I actually had pretty good luck with these last night, so we'll see. But the French say that the first crepe is for the dog. <laughs> so uh, we shall see how that turns out for me. Now, what you want to see is that the surface gets dry. And once it starts to get a little dry, you can ease it around with an offset spatula. I like an offset spatula because it just makes it easier to get under the food. You could use a straight spatula, but you, you, but you, you risk, you're more likely to risk accidentally ripping your crepe and it might have been easy to make but you don't want to have to do these things over and over again so this is pretty dry on the top i'm going to get rid of my pot holder and you can take your hands and flip it right over you see i'm accustomed to putting my hands in my food all the time this is a good this is a good time to do that because the more utensils you use, the more likely, again, as I said, said before, the more likely you are to potentially rip this very thin pancake. You see how thin this is? So while that cooks on the other side, and it cooked, it cooks like less than a minute on the first side, and even less than that, on the other side, I am. I just pulled out 
a whole bunch of these crepes that I made last night. Now, the beauty of this is that they are not going to stick together. They're not going to stick together because there is butter in the batter as well as butter that you use on the surface to cook it. Now this is ready to go. So we're going to flip this out. We're going to turn it right on top of the ones that I already made. And you have made your first crepe. Now Zoe says that you don't have to keep uh, replenishing the layer of butter in the crepe pan. Now hers might be far more well seasoned than mine. <laughs> But, you know, I, I'm going to have to tell you, listen, I'm black. We moisturize things. <laughs> we go out of our way to moisturize properly. And I don't want to, I don't want things to get stuck. So uh, this is still very hot. You'll see that there's a, there's a little bit of, you know, smoke coming off of this. That is fine. But you just want to be constantly aware. So you take this over. Actually, I'm going to take some of this off. And again... You very gently just put a, a thin layer of batter on the bottom. If there are any holes, you can just go back in and refill and, and fill the holes. So that sits. And remember that we are waiting for this top surface to get dry looking. You don't want to turn it before that. And while we're waiting for that, I do want to show you that there is a difference between the sides, which you probably have already noticed. But I'm going to take some of these that I just made and show you that the first side for me sort of looks a little mottled. It almost looks like, oh, almost looks like a tie dye or, or something that you would see, you know, if you're looking up in, into the cosmos through a microscope. The other side is kind of modeled. Now, some people will say that there's a good side and a bad side. That's up to you. I tend to like to display this side. And now, you'll also see that not only is it drier, but also you'll see that it's bubbling up a little bit. So, so over this goes. Now as hot as this pan got, you're not going to see um, these crepes getting too much color on them. Part of the reason why is that it's, it's extremely well seasoned. And the other reason why is that I'm not walking away from this. This is such a quick procedure and you do not want to walk away. I've actually, in the past, I'm gonna take this and put it aside because we don't really need it anymore. In the past, I've actually tried, in the interest of time, to do more than one at a time. And to me, this is just so easy and it goes so quickly. Why make the process more difficult for yourself by putting out several pans and having to keep track of them? You see how long this took. Here's the other one. It's done. Now I've already done a stack. So away this goes. We are going to kill the heat on this and we're going to go over and talk about putting together your crepe. And I'll take this one and leave it to continue to sit and develop and the longer you have them sit have the batter sit and develop the smoother the batter becomes and again the longer it sits the less likely you are to have um, lumps in your in your batter so we're going to make a couple of, of crepes and then I'm gonna have some surprises for you so some people like to flip them over like this. I guess that's fine, but I don't really care for that because, you know, you're, you're filling up the crepe with, with fillings. That's what fillings are. You fill things with fillings. Um, this doesn't give you quite, it doesn't give you as much surface area to enjoy the fillings altogether. So what I do, this is the standard and this is just one of my many ideas that I came up with for a filling for a crepe. Who doesn't love 
chocolate hazelnut spread. If he exists, well, I can only thank him for giving, for allowing me to have all the all the chocolate hazelnut spread that he doesn't like. But anyway, so these are nice and warm. So the hazelnut spread is just going to go right here. You can pretty much take it straight out to the corners if you like, or as close as you like to get. So there is my hazelnut spread, and you know, the choice is yours. I thought it would be nice to do hazelnut spread and banana. So I have a nice ripe banana, and I'm just gonna take some tiny little bits not too big because you really don't want to deform your lovely little crepe roll. But there's no major science to this. I think that's kind of enough for me. And then you just take one end of your crepe. I'm going to pull it back a little bit just to concentrate my ingredients. And look at that, you have a pretty crepe. You just, you just uh, leave it with the seam side down and you can top it with more banana, you can top it with powdered sugar. You can, it's, this is your creation. So you can uh, do what you like. Now there is another fold that I wanted to let you know about. There is something else that you can do with a crepe and that is called a blintz. I learned about blintzes from Miss Betty Crocker. So a blintz has a combination of, it, you, it, you take a crepe and inside a blintz you have a combination of um, cottage cheese and sour cream. So I'm going to take a heaping teaspoon, maybe even a tiny bit more. Of this is a combination of sour cream and cream cheese uh, and and uh, and cottage cheese cottage cheese now here's the thing a lot of people are not crazy about cottage cheese um, I once heard and I think it's absolutely true that there are two different types of people there are people who like yogurt and people who like cottage cheese near the two shall meet I actually like cottage cheese so this is fine for me. Now I'm going to make a blueberry blintz. Cherry blintzes are also sort of classic. So I am going to, instead of the lengthwise that I did before, what I'm going to do is to fold the sides in and tuck this almost like a, almost like an envelope. Now you'll, you'll have to zhuzh this a little bit. But that is the proper shape of a blintz. Now, here's another idea. If you have ever heard of crepe Suzette, which we're not gonna do today because uh, it involves active flame and uh, too much of a margin of error, mm -hmm. then what you would do is you take the same crepe and you fold it in a triangle of sort. And what you'll do with that triangle is you will uh, and I, I tend to do it all the same side, not the modeled side for me, but the one that looks kind of more like a constellation or tie-dye. And the crepe Suzette sits in a pan like this. It's, of course, it's, I have other stuff on this plate, so that's, there, there would be plenty more in a skillet, and then it is combined with um, Grand Marnier and set on fire and quite often served with ice cream. One of these days I'll do it. I've never done a crepe Suzette before and I didn't feel adventurous enough to do it today, but I have a bunch of different applications that I did do. One of which is savory. This is what the, the crew and I are gonna have for lunch. This is a chicken crepe. Why is this so cool? Because 
It's super fast and super easy and it uses the most basic ingredients. I just took some chicken breast, I sauteed it up, I cut it up, and then I took onion, celery, carrot, and mushroom. And I, I added to that a bag of frozen vegetables. Frozen vegetables are great. You shouldn't turn up your nose at those. They're a wonderful time saver, especially for your mother, you mothers who are trying to get to dinner on the table really quickly. And I made a sauce that was, and this, this, this sauce is a little less done than this one because this has not been in the oven. Guess what the sauce is? No, really, guess what the sauce is? It is cream of mushroom soup. I once had some girlfriends over and we ruined, yeah, I'll turn this light back on. We, I, I ended up ruining what I was going to make. And so what did I do? I threw together one of these. No one was any the wiser. So we're gonna have a savory and a bunch of sweets and another surprise in just a moment. So meet me out in the dining room. Now. So many options. I promised you a crepe bar and we have a crepe bar. So we're actually starting with the sweet over here and we're gonna move on over to the savory. It's almost like having a, what do they say? Life short, eat dessert first. So we have some options here. We have lemon curd. I've got some really nice chocolate chips, more of the hazelnut and chocolate spread, some mixed berries. I love, you know me and mixed berries. And uh, mango, which is always, always a good, a good move. My sister really loves mango. So that's a great option for crepes. Now down here is canned peaches. I found this at the store a couple of days ago. Again, don't, uh, don't turn up your nose at all canned and jarred things. This is a really wonderful option, especially when peaches aren't in season. And we have some ice cream for later. We also have some whipped cream. We have our naked crepes that we made. And um, let's see. This is, I decided to do berries and lemon curd, and that is the traditional uh, crepe shape. We have a couple of strawberry blintzes over here, and there is that uh, hazelnut and chocolate spread with banana that we made earlier. But we also have our chicken crepes, and I am gonna scoop right into that right now just to show you, it's like, it's it's just like a casserole. You know, I'm gonna maybe take a couple of them. What you do is you just roll up the crepes and you put a little bit of that sauce, that mushroom sauce that you made very easily in the bottom and you take your chicken crepes, you roll them up nicely with, with the filling that we made and this is a perfect dinner. It has all of the vegetables in it. I'm gonna get into that in just a second. But here is the surprise. This is the thing that I've been excited to share with you. And this is the first time I ever tried it. This is a crepe cake. That's why I was up late last night making all those layers of crepes that um, I let cool and I made what is known as a Chantilly cream. That is Julia Child's fancy way of saying sweetened, very thick whipped cream. So I layered the, the crepes and then I layered with the Chantilly cream and just kept layering and layering until I stopped stacking, until I got tired of stacking. And then sort of made what, you know, if you've ever heard of like a naked cake, that's how the sides look. And the top, I actually brulee so I, I took out a blowtorch. I put some sugar on top of the top crepe, as well as one of these beautiful peach halves, and took the blowtorch to all of that. Now, I'm not gonna cut into that on camera because uh, it's, it's, it's whipped cream and it's really, really hot in my apartment, so I don't wanna take any chances, but I will slice into that and post the picture of it online. So, so many things for us to enjoy. And with the chicken, I wanted to do a dry Riesling. And so I keep doing French wines. I found this, I know nothing about it. Um, it is Nick Weiss. I don't know. 
All I knew was that it was a dry Riesling and that that's what I wanted. So I'm gonna give that a shot with this chicken. We're gonna just get a little bite of this now. I love this because it's extremely light. And I'll pull it up here. The crepes are so light that it doesn't give you the feeling that you're eating bread, <laughs> but you're getting your carbs in. Mm, so flavorful. Remember, it's okay to use that cream of mushroom soup. And let's try this dry Riesling with it. Mm. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. It has a little bit of a fruitiness, but it hits you with a nice little, I don't even know how to describe it. Mm. It's just nice and fruity, but it's dry also. Now, let's light into, let's see. Do I even have a utensil for it? I'm gonna get a utensil, I'll tell you this. Let's get the gold ones. Uh, let's do, how can I not do this beautiful berry and lemon curd. And it's mine, so I'm gonna take the same fork and the same knife. It is, I was snacking on the lemon curd as I was getting things ready today. This is such a wonderful combination. And it's great when the berries are not the it, absolutely in the in the best season add the lemon curd and it just boosts the flavor of the berries yo this is to be had now for this i decided i was in the mood for a dry rosé and this is called fleur de prairie and this is and i bought it because i like the bottle okay I'll be honest about it but I know that I like a dry rosé, and when I read about it, this actually had a sort of a peachiness, peachiness to it that I think goes really well with all of this wonderful fruit. Mm. Oh yeah. And in spite of the fact that this looks like white, white Zinfandel, meh, it doesn't taste like white Zinfandel at all. It is absolutely divine. So, wow, that's a lot of stuff for the day. I encourage you to give it a try to take these simple little crepes that start out all naked and dress them up for a great meal for breakfast, lunch, brunch, dinner, dessert. If you like what you see, please like, subscribe, share with your friends and comment and tell me what you'd like to see in the future. This is Iris Fairfax for Buddha Bites. You are the Buddha. See you next time.